Justin Trudeau's Hail Mary Pass. Will it work? Hi, I'm Brian Lilly, political columnist for the Toronto Sun. With me, Warren Kinsella. Warren, uh, Justin Trudeau went into this uh, caucus retreat in Nanaimo, British Columbia. It wasn't looking too well for him. Reports that a third of caucus wouldn't show. Jugmeet Singh, if you haven't heard, ripped up his deal with Justin Trudeau. All of that's going on. And Trudeau seems to have come out of the caucus meeting with pretty good headlines in most media outlets because he appointed every journalist's favorite banker, Mark Carney, to head up a an advisory council on economic growth. What's your take on Trudeau's week so far when it comes to the um, the whole issue of the caucus retreat? Well, he's not my favorite banker, and um, you know, and I just want to say this off the top. Um, about Carney, you know, Justin Trudeau has told us for years that he is a feminist, right? In that, you know, modulated voice, you know, we should all aspire to be a feminist and I'm a feminist. <clears throat> well, the feminist this week completely emasculated Krista Freeland, who is a woman and who is the minister of finance. He brought on this unelected guy who's been untested in politics to devise an economic economic policy for the government. That, that's the job of the Minister of Finance. That's what the Minister of Finance is supposed to do. And, you know, I'm no fan of Freeland or the way in which she has done her job, but it is shameful for the way in which this guy has humiliated her. Trudeau has humiliated Freeland in public by bringing well, on Carney in the way he did. The first uh, inkling that we heard was not that Carney was going to be appointed to be advisor to the Liberal Party and the leader. And we can talk about some of the ethics around that in a moment. But first uh, rumor was, no, he's going into the finance department to work with her. I mean, that would have been even worse. Maybe they changed their mind after the rumors were reported on uh, because that would completely undermine her. It's, this still does, but putting her, uh, putting him in finance would be even worse. Would also be a bit of a demotion for him, since Paul Martin appointed him as senior deputy associate minister twenty years ago. He's been there. He's done that. Uh, it, the other part, though, is he came out and he said, "I'm an outsider." So I'm, I'm bringing in other ideas. And and sure, let me read off his resume. He is the UN Special Envoy on Climate Action and Finance. He's a finance advisor to the British Prime Minister. That's still on his LinkedIn. Chair and Head of Transition Investing at Brookfield Asset Management. He's a board member at Stripe, a board member at Bloomberg Philanthropies, a board member at the World Economic Forum. The guy's got 50 different jobs. Uh, and now he's the, the special advisor to to the Liberal Party. I, I think it's fair to question, okay, what kind of advice are we getting from this outsider who's really a big-time Liberal insider? And who's he representing? Because as a board member, he has a fiduciary duty to look after the best interests of the uh, the board, the company that he's serving. I think there's a few conflicts going on here. Yeah, and one that uh, you and others have pointed out, you know, Brookfield, where he is a big cheese, is talking about moving to New York City, where they can take better advantage of the markets. That's not exactly, you know, the behavior of someone who hopes to be Prime Minister of Canada one day. And like, but like, Brian, I have seen this movie before. You know, you and I got to know each other 15 years ago during that period where I rashly decided to advise Michael Ignatieff. And, you know, I think Matt Ignatieff is actually smarter politically than this guy. Like, you know, when you've lived outside the country for a long time, as Ignatieff did, as Carney has done, it's very hard to make the case that you're doing anything other than just visiting. And if that sounds familiar, well, that was the $4 million ad campaign that Stephen Harper dropped on Michael Ignatieff's head and ended his political career and drove the Liberal Party of Canada to third place for the first time in its history. Why the Liberals are considering repeating that movie and going through this again is beyond me. But then again, you know, they're sticking with Justin Trudeau. So that's mystifying too. All right. So Trudeau's been able to turn this around, you know, it looks like, you know, the media are giving him tougher questions, but there's still some love there. He is getting good headlines out of this. 
even though he's also getting headlines with the sniping. Um, people saying on the record, uh, oh, you know, I still love him, but my constituents don't, so we should go. And then off the record, they're saying this guy's, you know, like the NDP claimed, he's radioactive, he's no good for us. You got five chiefs of staff who have quit. I'm told there are uh, dozens of DCOM and chiefs positions between the two of them open in Ottawa. They can't get people to, to go there to work for the government in key positions. Uh, he's got, you know, caucus members not showing up. He's having a rougher go of it than it would appear. Yeah, and as, um, you know, it's the Titanic. Who would jump on the deck of the Titanic? Or as my former boss, Kretzian, would say, the Titanic. <laughs> like, you know, you've got, like, I have never seen this happen before. They're having a retreat, a caucus retreat out in BC, which they should, paying attention to Western Canada. And a third of caucus does not show up. Among those who do, a senior Quebec MP gets out there, stands in front of a microphone and says, everybody hates him. I kind of like him, but everybody hates him. And like, it, it is a disaster. And then the polling is not good either. Jagmeet Singh, a week ago, as we talked about on this broadcast, uh, said he was going to tear up, tear up, tear up, rip up, rip up the agreement with Justin Trudeau. Well, he did that. And the polling that's happened seems to suggest he's benefited from that because he's well, right it, in the Liberals' rear view it, mirror. Le Leger, um, th they did a poll immediately after this, or a couple yep. days after. They did it over the weekend. Just released. It has uh, Leger has the Conservatives at 45% now, the Liberals at 25 but Singh at, at, at 15 and Leger's uh, never done that before. Leger's not never gotten to 20 points as far as I know. And they it, are the I, most accurate federal pollster. So that that is uh, showing me that this stuff is not breaking through either for Singh or for Trudeau. Uh, give them some wise advice as we wrap this up. What should either one of them do to actually move the needle? Not that I want them to win, but if, if you're advising them as a, a longtime... Uh, uh, seasoned veteran of campaigns. What do they do? Easy. You hand Mr. Trudeau a piece of paper and say, I, Justin Trudeau, resign the leadership of the Liberal Party of Canada, and I will no longer be Prime Minister. That is it. That's all they've got. You know, I think, as I told you, he was holding on to see if Trump would win again. And maybe that would sort of possibly kind of give him a shot at something where he says, you know, do you want Pierre Polyev in Ottawa? and Donald Trump in Washington, you need a progressive like me. Well, I think she's going to win now. So that's gone. Like but he's but even if Trump does win, wall. I've talked to liberals who say campaigning against Trump is not helping. Yeah, and, and I'm not saying it's the right strategy. I'm saying he had decided that was the strategy. Yeah. I think that's what he's been holding on to. So, so no, the Singh only do? way out, he's got to quit. He's got to leave. He's got to go. Sayonara. Go write your memoirs. Go on the lecture circuit. It's over, big guy. It's time to go. And, and you know, and for Jugmeat, and for Jugmeat, I think he's done what he had to do. He had to step back from the Trudeau blast radius. Leger is saying that he's benefited from that, but I don't think he's going to vote down the government because he's not out of the burning house yet himself. He needs to get his numbers up before he's in a position to face an election. So he needs time, but Trudeau needs to go. All right, let us know what you think of the political scene right now and of our feminist prime minister just undermining his female finance minister. Drop a comment down below, share this on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel.